Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. Nah. Wrestling 101, class is in session Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek I mean these guys making the killer with no competition Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed They cannot be beat, take a seat, watch them do they thing on the MIC Face defeat, they cannot be seen like JC Oh my goodness, it's in killer spree, yeah? What are you waiting for? Sitting there waiting for a great wrestling podcast? Wrestling IQ 101, it's got your name on it, and you need to listen to it right now. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and alongside Derek. Yep. And you can follow us on Wrestling IQ 101. And today, we are sitting here with Selena Majors, who's part of WOW on Access TV every Friday night at 9 o'clock. How you doing, Selena? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, Selena, you know, WOW is on, on Access TV. Mm-hmm. What can the fans expect every Friday night from this? Well, I tell you, I'm really excited um, about every Friday night. We're having a one-hour all-women's wrestling show. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, that's young know even who I am, but I wrestled for 30 years in the wrestling business as Bambi. And uh, I just go by my real name now because I kind of stepped out of the ring and come into WOW. And uh, so every Friday night we have a great platform that Access TV has given us. And it's one hour of nonstop wrestling, women wrestling. And it's fun, family. Uh, it's great entertainment. And if you're a wrestling fan or if you're not a wrestling fan, I think if you tune in, you're really going to be entertained. Nice, definitely. Now, Selena, when you first started, uh, you know, 30 years ago, did you ever think, you know, that you would get to this point where, you know, you would be a part of a show like WOW, where, you know, it's just featuring exclusively women? No, I tell you, I I say this story over and over, so people will probably get tired of hearing it, but I'm really blessed, and I'm living a dream that I didn't know I was going to be here when I was a little 10-year-old kid. Uh, that fell in love with wrestling, uh, like a lot of fans do. And my dad used to take me, and I fell in love with it, and it just captured me. And, uh, you know, I went through a lot of stuff like a lot of people do, and wrestling is what I turn to to get me through um, things in my life. So I love wrestling, and I've given my life to it. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm 52 years old, and I'm blessed to be still part of of wrestling and i'm a coach and a trainer and i feel blessed to have the respect of the girls and still be involved in what i love so much and what's driven me all these years the passion um i just i truly am blessed and i also would like to say i've seen it come full circle a lot of people uh 2019 and they talk about the women uh had an evolution or a revolution or whatever and and, and and it has, but we've been trying to do it for a long, long time, but we never had the platform. And Access TV, Mark Cuban, uh, Andrew Simon, and Jeannie Buss, uh, and David McLean, they all made it happen. And was they're all great individuals, and they were able to come together and give us the right platform at the right time. And I'm so proud of the girls. I live vicariously through them. And someone asked me the other day something about retirement. And I said, I don't know if a wrestler ever retires. You can twist our arm and we want to get back in there. But I live vicariously through the girls. And every Friday night on Access TV at 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock, depends on where you live, tune in and you'll see a great show. And you can live vicariously through the superheroes just like I do. Yeah, if you don't have WOW... You know, or Access TV, you want to call up your cable company because last week was the premiere and what excitement was there. You know, when you watch it now going forward, who are some of the women that you want to see kick so much butt? Well, I tell you, we have the elite uh, women wrestlers. And I'm so proud to even be a part of it and know them. But the first person that comes to my mind is the Beast. And I brag about her because... Not since China has I have I seen anybody that really even comes close to that, to that kind of specimen, to that, you know, just an amazing uh, 
character or, or personality. And the beast, when she walked in to the train, well training center, and she walked, she came in to do a tryout. And from the moment I seen her, I, she just has that it, you know, I guess. Hulk Hogan must have had it, mm-hmm. and you know we, we can name out the ones that 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 do. But there's a lot of great stars in wrestling. But when you think of somebody special, the Beast, uh, she's really going to be special, and she is special. And uh, as I go down the list, I guess the second in command would have to be the respect that I have for Tessa Blanchard. Um, mm. I'm a fan, so when I was a kid, I grew up watching the Four Horsemen, of course, and Tully Blanchard, and actually, I always liked the bad guy, so Tully and Ole and that group was my favorite, and so to be in the room with her, one, I have to pinch myself, thinking, wow, am I that 10-year-old little kid, and I'm just dreaming all this, because if, if I would have thought back then that this is how my life was, well, what a difference it would have made in my journey, so... Uh, Tessa is phenomenal. Very few times that you have someone with the passion, the desire, the determination, and the athleticism that she has. And one challenge that she's overcome, and as I got to know her, uh, it's, it's very important to me to put this message out there. Just because her last name is Blanchard doesn't mean that she got a free ticket. Uh, in this wrestling uh, business because she has worked harder than anybody I've ever seen in 30-some-odd, 33 years of being in the business and being around it my whole life. Uh, My great friend, George South, uh, he trained her, and I'm proud to say that, and she tells everyone, and she had to overcome things because of her name. Because of her name, she had to work harder and work longer and do everything 10 times harder if she would have had some other name. So she is great, and I can't wait for everybody to see her in action. Uh, the Beast is terrific. Jungle Girl, she's been in the ring uh, for over 18 years, and mm-hmm. her shoulders have never been pinned to the mat. And she's a phenomenal athlete. Uh, she owns her own gym up in uh Virginia, and to look at her, she is just an unbelievable. When she first started out in WOW, you know, way back in the day, she came into the tryout and just leaped right over the top rope and threw a drop kick. And I said, wow, have you been trained before? And she had never even stepped in the ring before. And so she's just one of those natural athletes. That it just came so natural to her. Um, and then, of course, we got Santana Garrett, who is the WOW champion, and her name speaks for itself. Yeah, She's true. one of the most, uh, you know, recognized independent girl wrestlers there is in the business. So I can go on and on and ramble, but you probably have another question, because I can ramble about <laughs> them all day long, because I'm just so proud of them, and I'm so proud that Access uh, TV gave us this time slot, because... We, we tried it a long time ago, and this is the perfect platform. We're right on after New Japan Wrestling, and it's at 9 o'clock. Uh, depends, like I said, it depends on where, where you live. It could be 6 o'clock, but we're on access, and we're coming on right after the other wrestling show. You can sit back on a Friday night with your popcorn, and it makes me feel like I'm a kid again and watch two hours of wrestling, and, and what great entertainment is that. Yeah. Yeah, and... You know, speaking of that, you know, being on Access TV, let's talk about the importance of uh, Jeannie Buss and, you know, David McLean to the product. You know, Jeannie herself, she's uh, breaking barriers with, you know, the work she does with the Lakers. And now, you know, to put this platform forward as well, it's like it's amazing work that she's doing. She is the most amazing woman I've ever met. And truly, uh, there's a lot of women that you can look up to. Uh, especially in the business world or in the sports industry. But Jeannie Buss, I would have to say, is at the top of my list. I mean, she believed in us. And, you know, she's from a sports background. Her dad, for anybody that doesn't know, you know, who she is, her dad owned the Lakers. She owned the Lakers, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers basketball team. And she went out on a limb, I guess you might say, and jumped into something that she had never been around before, women's wrestling. But she always loved Wonder Woman, and she always loved superheroes and comic books growing up. And she believed in us enough 
to put herself on the line. And I just think the world of her. And, hey, I tell her every time I see her, if it wasn't for you, I'd just be some broken down old lady wrestler in Georgia. But you gave me something to do. You give me my passion. And you give me a purpose to keep on going. And I'm so blessed for her. And I got to put David McLean up. Because sometimes I take for granted uh, saying nice things about David because he and I are such best buddies, best friends. We're like brother and sister. We've been on each other for over 30 years. And I forget to brag about him because sometimes when you're close to people, you leave them out. But David is is just awesome. He is, he is my best friend. I guess I can sum it up more than anything. And he believed in something uh, 30 years ago, and I did too, and we met, and we both had the same vision uh, for women's wrestling, and something that he, he went out of the box with Glow uh, way back in the 80s, 85, 86, and, and took a risk. And the world wasn't ready for it yet, I don't know. Uh, not until recently did they get uh, all the recognition that they deserved when the Netflix show came on. And all this time, nobody really knows because the Netflix show isn't a real, I mean, it's a fiction. They took an idea and then made it fiction. But the real story is David never stopped, and neither did I. And all this time went by, we kept on believing in the same uh, I guess you'd say the same recipe, the same ingredients. Just keep on going. It's kind of like the turtle that wins the race. Don't let anything, if you can't get it overnight, don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep on believing. And there were times that I figured, oh, they're never going to give the women the platform that they did, you know, that we have now. And I doubted it. Uh, I had a lot of people, you know, kind of tease me about it. It ain't going to happen. You're believing in something that's never going to happen. But I didn't ever stop believing. And I give all that to David because I believed in him. And uh, he's made, I feel like the little kid still on the you know, front row cheering, going, gosh, Dad, I want to do that one day. He made that dream come true. So with all those people, and Mark Cuban and Andrew Simon and David McLean and Jeannie Buss all together, they're the superheroes in my eyes. They gave us the platform to make the girls the spotlight for one hour. And I just think the timing is beautiful, and I hope everybody enjoys it. And, you know, I know I'm like a, a proud mom. I don't have kids, but they're all my kids, so I'm like a proud mom bragging right now because I'm just so proud of them. And uh, I hope everybody tunes in and watches. And don't forget Friday nights on Access TV. I can't say that enough. I don't want anybody to miss it. But uh, we had one episode already, one show last week. And the other one's coming up. I don't know when this airs, but uh, it's this coming Friday. Uh, and so uh, please, you know, tune in and tell us on social media what you think and what you'd like to see. And we're open to anything. Yeah, you know, Selena, one thing I've always respected about you is you didn't wait for a re revolution, an evolution. I mean, you went out there. I mean, what struggles have, have you gone through that have made you a great trainer and helping out the women of WOW? Um, trying to make a difference. Um, just trying to make a difference. Uh, I, when I first got into the wrestling, it's so different than it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 360. It's a full circle difference. Um, so to be blunt, and I'm going to use terms that, that people don't really use today, mm -hmm. but they would put it either, they would have girls, like girls, 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 girls match. Sometimes you wouldn't even get your name on there. Just say girls match. Of this a midgets match, you know, mm -hmm. and we were like the right before the intermission or right after the intermission, or as David set up in his area when he grew up with the bruises and put it on before the main event so he could go to the bathroom and get popcorn. And that's I'm not whining and complaining, but that's just the facts. That's how it was. And so we went from that to probably the early nineties. Uh, you know, like I said, David tried it with blow in the eighties, and then. Uh, it seemed to kind of emerge maybe in the 90s, like they were trying to emerge it, but uh, it, it never did. It just it just it never had the platform. And uh, But we just kept going with it, and I, and I kept wrestling and just kept doing whatever. And, you know, um, I just kept believing that one day we would have our own platform, and we wouldn't have to share it. We'd have equal. And I'm blessed to say that that day has come. Nice.
Now, I know you're from uh, down south, down Georgia. My grandparents, they're also from down there. Um, I wanted to know, you always spread the message of Southern pride. I want to know, what does Southern pride mean to you? Oh, wow. It's just it's me. Anybody that knows me, uh, it's just me. I'm so proud of the um, where I live. Um, I embrace it. And I think that... Uh, I didn't. I don't know how to really put this into a lot of words, but so when I, I went out to California to live and, and work at the training center, and a lot of people that look at the South from a whole different perspective, and I gotta say, I missed it. You know, like uh, we're just we're just good old people. You know, it's not a not a facade or whatever. Everybody's friendly. You know, they're still. The guys hold the door for the girl when you go in the store. And just, you know, we're just good Southern people. And we're proud of who we are. And we're proud that we haven't changed. And so to me, it's it's my heritage. It's my childhood. Um, when you hear Leonard Skinner immediately, you know, I think of my childhood and the fabulous free birds. And, you know, just I, I'm just a, a country girl. And just I'm just proud of it. And I get teased a lot from you know, from the way my hair is cut to the way I talk to um, the way I pronounce the eight words or whatever. But, hey, maybe that is Southern pride because I'm proud of who I am. And I've always believed in this, and it's a wild uh, motto as well, is be strong, be yourself, and win. And I like to say be strong, be yourself, and kick out. <laughs> and that's what I believe. And so whoever you are, just be you. And don't be afraid to be you. And if it's different or unique, just embrace it. And I guess that's just people pride. But I guess it comes from where I was brought up and raised. So I guess that's why I love Southern Pride. Well, nice, Selena. You know, I can't wait for the second episode to premiere of WOW. Um, You know, let me just ask you this real quick. You know, you, you've been everywhere from WCW to Smoky Mountain. You faced Medusa. You know, your rivalry with Thug will live on forever. Uh, and you talked about David McLean. Um, you know, when he when he came with you to the hospital when you when you injured your leg and you were out for seven weeks, you know, was that really the start of your friendship down there? Or was it prior? Uh, no, that wasn't the beginning. The beginning of our friendship started on a bus. Um uh, when I was wrestling for a group up in uh, close to Chicago, Indianapolis, up that way. Mm-hmm. And we were on a tour, an all-women's uh, tour group, and he just happened to be on the bus that they put me on. And everybody was, you know, doing their thing. It was the 80s. They were, you know, whatever, partying. And I was just this little country girl, like, whatever, 19 years old, 20 years old. Mm-hmm. And I was just set up at the front of the bus, and David sat up there. And we talked about wrestling and how he grew up and was a fan when he was a kid. And he got to know the bruiser and got into business by um I hate to say illegally selling pictures at the show, but as a kid, I think he was 10 or 12 or something, and he would take pictures and then sell them, and, and he got to know Bruiser. And that's kind of a different story, but I got to know Ole Anderson, and he got to know me and my dad, and uh, I thought it was kind of cool that he was such a mean person, and everybody that knows wrestling knows that that was like, that's really him. <laughs> but he was, for some reason, he was nice to me and my dad, and he was like my mentor, and so... Me and David had similar childhoods, and then our, so we talked about our past and present, and then our future, what we wish women's wrestling could be. And I would say that's when our friendship started. And you know, he went and did his thing. He did some great accomplishments, you know, with uh, polo and uh, beach hockey and stuff. And I went to Georgia, and I ended up buying a chicken farm, and I worked for WCW, and he said, you know, smoke him out and some other things. And mm-hmm. but we never lost our friendship where we call each other. And we we talk about our dream of how we wanted the platform for the all women's wrestling and how we would do it and how we wish it was and you know sometimes I'd complain about how it was on the independent scene and you know we would just talk about how great it would be to have basically what we have now which is wow and so we've had a long friendship for over 30 years and uh, so but he did go to the hospital with me that night mm-hmm. and that's on film but what's not on film mm-hmm. is uh, after the, the last show, uh, I, I was in a cage match and I got my head busted open. And I really lost so much blood that I, I just blacked out. I walked down the steps and just saw the whole stage. And 
when I came to and realized where I was, I was in the hospital and David was right there beside of me. And it took like 26 stitches to stitch my head up. And he stayed with me the whole time and he was the only one there. So I have to say he's probably my best friend. Well, thank God you're okay. And that's the champion spirit of yourself and it proves uh, not only that, but to the people of WOW, because here we are, you didn't give up on this dream, and, and people can enjoy this at 6 o'clock uh, p.m. on the West Coast or 9 p.m. on the East Coast on Access TV every Friday right after New Japan. Uh, Selena, can you tell us where people can get you on social media? So um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I think it's uh, Selena at WOW. I tell you, I'm in my 50s, so I'm not as hip on the social media as some of the younger girls, but they're all teaching me. And uh, right now, I'm at home in Georgia. My dad, he's eight, uh, 79 years old, and he had knee surgery, and I'm tending to him. And I can't wait for a couple of weeks for him to get well so I can get back on the West Coast at the WOW Training Center and and uh, get back into business. But yes, yeah, please send it to us or just send it to Wild Superheroes. Uh, go to our website or, our, or you know our Facebook at Wild Superheroes and tell us what you think. I think if you watched the show last week, it was a phenomenal show and there's so much great talent out there and the girls have such athleticism. And uh, you know, watch it and tell us what you think. This is something where I feel like we're breaking uh, barriers, we're breaking the glass ceiling. And if don't, you know, communicate with us on social media and tell us what you think about it. And uh, and we'd just love to hear from everybody. Awesome. Yeah, definitely make sure you check it out. Uh, once again, wow, it's on Access TV, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you check it out every Friday. It's a great product. You got some great women talent there. You definitely want to watch this and you don't want to miss it. As for us, we're Wrestling IQ 101. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Wrestling IQ 101. We thank you for listening and stay tuned. And we are out. You have just listened to the Wrestling IQ 101 podcast, powered by B Plus Player Radio.